call the budget committee meeting to order now. We do have a quorum and we'll begin, uh, we will begin by welcoming uh, Margaret Darby, who we hope to, um, who is visiting with us and we hope will be approved as incoming, what's the official title, director and chief counsel. Special counsel, and we want to thank Hannah for the fine job that she has done holding down the fort in the meantime and beg her to stick around. So um, appreciate that. And we're, we're glad to have Margaret appointed to that and we look forward to her confirmation. So with that, uh, let's look at RS 2021-1186. Sponsor is Allen. This approves an intergovernmental agreement related to the South Nashville Central Business Improvement District by the Metro government and its industrial development board. Um, and because some of you may be new to Central, the South Nashville Central Business Improvement District, is there anyone here that can just briefly, um, if you'll come up and just tell us real quickly what, what that is and what this does, that would be great. Oh, let me turn on your mic, sorry. Uh, public table. Now you're recognized. Hey, good afternoon. Mark McDonald and David Young with the developer, Old Acre McDonald. Uh, this is a uh, intergovernmental agreement that we've had in place for four or five years that allows us to put a tax on our own property, which is about 300 acres of gross century farms, which has been under development now for four or five years at the new interchange on I-24. So we're putting the tax on ourselves and using that money to issue bonds in order to get reimbursed for a portion of the infrastructure improvements we put in place. It doesn't cost the city anything. Great. We love roads that get built by other people. So, yes, ma'am. Any other questions? Yes, Councilmember Pulley, let me find you. You're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I just briefly, it's in, it says that Metro has agreed to share financial responsibility for funding the connector roads with Century Farms. And does the CBID money fund? just Century Farms portion of this, or does any of that seed bid money go to Metro's portion of this agreement to fund the connector roads? Uh, I, th I think that money just comes back to Century Farms to reimburse us for the money we've, we've spent on the Century Farms roads. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank you. That's all I have, Madam Chair. Appreciate it. Any other questions? So, uh, yes, over here, Council Member Hurt. Thank you, Madam Chair. Are there going to be any other businesses that's going to receive this tax that's out there in that area? This is really for infrastructure improvements, and those infrastructure improvements will obviously benefit all the businesses that are located at Century Farms. We think we'll ultimately have well over 100, well, well over 200 businesses locate in the, in the development. Right. I, I'm, I'm specifically speaking about the small businesses are there because many of them cannot afford an additional tax. And I'm just wondering what percentage is going to be uh, affected by small businesses with the tax that you are uh, recommending. Um, I may let uh, Margaret Darby, since she's here, answer that question at the admin table. Oh, hello. Um, this is actually a special assessment for that district. The council approved this special assessment back in 2018 and increase the amount in 2019. So it'll be $1 per $100 of assessed value on the property. Um, there's a, there's a, a boundary line that uh, all of the properties that are within that boundary will pay this special assessment. It's technically not a tax um, and uh, it will be assessed equally to all of the property owners within that boundary. Again, my question is, what about the small businesses and how many are going to be affected? And I understand that this may have been approved by the council uh, in 2018. I have a much better understanding of how things are operating now than I did then. So my question, where I may not have had questions then, I do have questions now. How is this going to affect and what percentage of small businesses are going to be affected by the assessment? I don't have an answer for how many small businesses are in that area or will be coming to the area, but this is, uh, from what I understand, the CBID was created in uh, an area that had not been developed yet. So all the businesses that will be going to that area, I believe, are new businesses, not 
existing okay. businesses. Okay, so that means that they may very well exclude those small businesses that may want to be a part of it but cannot afford to. I don't, I don't have an answer for that. I don't think that they would exclude businesses that wanted to, uh, you know, operate there. No, I'm just so saying just if they don't... Council member, this, this applies to the property owners, not to, to, that, who may choose to pass it on to renters or not, but it's, a, it's an assessment paid only by the property owners who own the property today. Right, and, and I understand that. I mean, um, there was, uh, I realized, remember when the Gulch created mm -hmm. the CBID for that area, and I know that we inquired about getting something for Jefferson Street. And many of those businesses were unable to support it because they could not afford it, even though they owned their businesses. So I'm just asking a question. If there will be small businesses who want to be in that area, if they would be able to afford the assessment that comes with it, and if they cannot afford the assessment, they won't be able to move in that area, although there is a CBID. So, I guess that means is there can there some allowances be made in order to provide something for small businesses? At this time, all property owners will pay the assessment. And we, Thank we can, you. We can have a further workshop just to learn about the legal implications of CBID. State law has some very specific requirements for that, and perhaps the lawyer sitting next to you can expound. Councilmember Mendez, you had a question and maybe an answer. I'm pretty sure the answer, I mean, I'm, I don't get to play lawyer in this room, but I'm pretty sure all the property owners are going to pay it. Um, uh, so the question, I guess, and this is either finance or um, Ms. Darby or uh, Mr. Oldham back there, um, but a couple things I want to confirm. One, uh, no, the only um, funds that are obligated to repay these bonds are the special assessments from the CBID, right? That's correct. All right. And, and then um, just uh, helping me understand the memorandum of understanding and, and an offline conversation that we had three minutes ago, um, I understand that at this point, the developer um, has incurred costs related to the infrastructure in excess of the amount of the bond issuance and that the proceeds of the bonds once issued are going to go to reimburse the developer for those expenses. Have I got that right? Yes, the majority of the funds will be going to the developer to reimburse for the expenses. I believe there may be some future expenses that will come up. And, and so I guess for the future expenses, whatever those are, who Will a developer hold those, those, that money pending those expenses or will Metro hold the money until the expenses are incurred by them? M Metro won't hold the money, but uh, SER Bond Council has stood up if, to answer some of these financing questions. Mr. Oldham, yeah. you're recognized. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, so um, yeah, you, you're exactly right. Bond, bond proceeds uh, will be used to reimburse them for costs already incurred. <clears throat> so then going forward, all special assessment revenues will move over and pay debt service on bonds. If there's anything left over and they have additional capital costs that they've incurred to get this project developed as contemplated by the CBID ordinance, they would be able to capture that, but only after the payment of debt service. All right, so uh, I saw that in the agreement. The, so all the bond proceeds go to reimburse the developer for expenses already, net of expenses. Net and a funding of a debt service reserve fund, which is sort of an important piece. There'll be a year's worth of debt service right. that would have to be funded and then replenished if it were ever drawn on. And, and then for the special assessments, when they come in, they go first to the bond payments, second to other capital improvements um, yeah. that the CBID That's is exactly. paying for, and then anything left after that, Metro's got an ability to recapture some of it? So, so the, the excess, and this is true of all CBIDs, the excess revenues go to the, to the CBID, and there's a district management corporation formed um, that's got both sort of public and private members, and that's true of the other CBIDs in town, so the money goes to them and, and then goes to district improvements as that board directs. All right, thanks a lot. I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you, that's helpful. Uh, Council Member Glover. Just, just one quick question, and I, I think uh, I probably stay in, in your lane here. Uh, we, as a city, though, don't have a, a financial obligation because 
I mean, if it fell short, because I'm going to look at the the opposite. For if there is an excess, okay, one. But let's talk about if there's not and there's a shortage, then the developer, if I remember correctly, in this is responsible for that shortage. No, no the bondholders are. So bondholders are buying these, relying solely on the special assessment revenues, and there have been a fair number of sort of assessment projections and reports prepared. To provide them comfort that they'll they'll be enough, but if they're not, and you know there are no guarantees in life, if they're not, um, that shortfall falls on them. Okay. Bonds are sold in a way that makes that very clear. Okay. And and they frankly bear interest rates that reflect you know the bondholders are taking that risk. Okay. All right. Very good. Thank you. Hmm. Thank you, Councilmember Sledge. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. A couple things. Uh, Councilmember Vercher noted she is stuck at. Game-related traffic, so she wanted me to pass that along to you. Um, so I wanted to follow up on Councilmember Hurt's questions because I, I think it's probably more appropriate to ask the applicant on a couple of those. But first, I, I know the CBITs have to be renewed every few years. I feel like this one came up fairly recently, but I would look to legal when this was renewed because I think they, they have to come up every five or seven years or so. Is that you, Hannah? Hang on. I believe this was created in 2018. I'm about to check. It was created in 2018. Gotcha. Okay. So I guess what I would ask of the applicant is what, what I think Councilmember Hurt was trying to say is, is there an intention by the applicant once these properties are built out to pass forward because they could still be the owner, but do they intend to pass through the CBID uh, assessment to the tenants? Is that something I could ask the applicant? Uh, Mr. McDonald? Yes, thanks. You know, most of the properties will be sold, for example, to Tanger, who's buying a 20-acre site and will have 100-plus tenants on it. They may choose to pass that assessment through to the tenants, or they may choose not to pass that assessment through. We really don't have control over it once it's sold. Sure, totally understood. And I guess the follow-up there would also be, and this is asking you to predict a little bit in the future, but you know, the rate right now is, is fairly high uh, by necessity, I think, for what they wanted to do. Is the anticipation when that CBIG comes up for renewal that that rate would be significantly lowered given that it's funding pretty significant infrastructure right now? Yeah, I think the ultimate goal is once the infrastructure, the bonds have been paid off and reimbursed, which we think will take you know, 15 years or so, that CBID would go away except for a nominal amount of money that would be used for ongoing maintenance. Got it. So when, once those bonds pay back the, the principal amount of the bonds, then there'd be a nominal amount of money. Thank you. Thanks. That's clarifying. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. That's helpful information. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, did we have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? You recommend? We have 11. Great. Uh, next, on to RS 2021-1187, sponsors O'Connell, Allen & Young. This approves a license agreement between Metro Government and the State of Tennessee relating to the use space beneath the Broadway Bridge spanning the Gulf. Do I have a motion? Yeah. Been moved and seconded. Um, again, this one's a little confusing. If, if there is someone in the back that can come explain what space under the bridge we're dealing with here, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Your Honor, uh, Charles Robert Bone, Your Honor, Council Lady, <laughs> I'm used to this building. Uh, Charles Robert Bone, uh, on behalf of Nashville Yards, this was part of a larger package that the Council approved almost three years ago. It specifically relates to the space underneath the Broadway Bridge between the Union Station Hotel and the Grand Hyatt and what will be their park. And so the idea at the time was uh, we talked to the state about this, the state recommended that they license the property to Metro and Metro in turn license the property to Nashville Yards. That second piece of that was done three years ago. We've been working with the state since then to go through their environmental review and everything else. This would allow the, the developer to go in and clean up that space, allow for some connectivity, some open space where you could access the Frist Museum and the Union Station on that side of it and go back and forth without having to go over Broadway and, and kind of connect back into that park long term. The agreement that Metro already has in place with Nashville Yards, Nashville Yards assumes all the responsibility insurance, indemnification. There's no responsibility to Metro. All of that is passed on to the Nashville Yards folks. Great. Thank you for that explanation. Mr. Roten, you have a question. 
Yeah. Uh, Mr. Brown, when do they start construction on the bridge? I was just curious about that whole so timeline there. My client would have preferred five years ago. Um, so there, <laughs> they are a lot of conversation with TDOT. My guess is they had TDOT has this on an expedited path could happen at some point next year, so but sometime in the so next two years or three years from now. Is yeah, what some, uh, I'll let you guess as to when that would be. TDOT's been great to work with and, they, and they're going to do an expedited replacement where that bridge should only be down for a period of six weeks. But obviously a lot of planning will go into work in short in order to make that happen. Okay. Thank you for that information. Very good. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? You recommend? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Boone. Any other? We're still at 11. Great. Next is RS 2021-1188, sponsors Roberts, Parker, Allen, and Welsh. This authorizes the Metro Development and Housing Agency to enter into a pilot agreement and accept payments in lieu of ad valorem taxes with respect to a multifamily housing project located at 5800 Maldina Drive, known as Richland Hills. I understand there is a substitute to... Um, Correct it to Avenue, is that correct? Would someone like to move the substitute? Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any comments on the substitute? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Ten. Uh, we recommend the substitute. Uh, we, can we have a motion on the bill as substitute, on the resolution as substituted? Been moved and seconded. We have a letter to approve from the sponsor. We heard about this in the Affordable Housing Committee. Does anyone need further explanation? Council Member Pulley. All right. I just have a couple of questions, if, uh, if I may. Go for it. All right. Uh, for the, the current property value on the property in question, I understand, is slightly more than $14 million. Is that right? Yes, I believe I believe that's the number. Yes, and you currently pay a little more than one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars a year in property tax. That's correct, and that's frozen as of twenty twenty. No, no, that no. is the the pilot will actually take place. Well, ex outside of the pilot, it, yeah, that would have been uh, frozen. So I understand that the uh, uh, renovation would increase the value to slightly more than twenty-nine million. That's anticipated. Yes. Yeah. And um, so the way I calculate this over the 10 years, it looks like you would actually be within the framework of the abatement, you'd be paying more property tax over that 10 year period than if it was not renovated and the property tax stayed in its current form. Is that right? That's potentially correct. Yes. Okay. And the only other question I would have is the, uh, the uh, agreement uh, to service the properties at the 60% AMI. Um, uh, tell me about the terms of that and how long that will last. The affordability requirement that goes with this is a, is a total of a 20-year affordability requirement. The pilot will expire within 10 years, but that there's a land use restriction that, that will continue beyond that. So it, after the 10 years, it will go on an additional 10 years or an additional 20? An additional 20, I'm sorry. So for a yes. total of 30, right? Yes. Okay, that's all questions I have. Thank you. Good questions. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Mr. Kane. Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Resolution is approved as substituted. Next is RS 2021-1190, sponsors Allen and Evans. This approves a firearms technical assistance project pilot site initiative grant from the United States Department of Justice to the Metro Office of Family Safety to increase compliance with Tennessee firearms dispossession laws. Do we have a motion? been moved and seconded. Any questions? Comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? We recommend. Next is RS 2021-1191, sponsors Gamble, Taylor, Toombs, Suara, and Hall. This recognizes the North Nashville Bordeaux Participatory Budgeting, Steering Committee, and Process. Do we have a motion? Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Council Member Glover. Can I just get, I guess, a bit more understanding of what it is hoped to accomplish here? I guess more than anything else is, all right, we recognize it. What's going to be the outcome? Mr. Jameson. 
Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Councilman Glover. Uh, the primary um, architect of these uh, process rules has been Fabian Bednay in the mayor's office. He could not be here today or tomorrow, so it is his suggestion to the sponsors. I think Councilor Gamble is going to move a one meeting deferral. Uh, bottom line is that while the committee has come up with rules and, and processes for how to allocate the $2 million that you and your colleagues uh, graciously gave to this endeavor, they just want council blessing uh, of those processes. It's not mandatory, but we think it's a good idea in interest of transparency that the council see and approve those rules. But again, a, a one meeting deferral is anticipated and Mr. Bedney will be here at the next meeting. Well, I think that answers it. I mean, I, I was just trying to understand what is it we're trying to really accomplish here. So, okay. But it, with one meeting deferral, that's fine also. Great. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Council Member Hurt. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, is there a cap on the amount? So considering that this is uh, set, uh, this is the first one, if this uh, process is uh, offered in other communities and other areas, is it going to be a $2 million cap there as well? Uh, $2 million, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councilor you heard. Uh, the $2 million figure was discussed during the operating budget uh, proposal. And the notion was this is this is a first for Nashville. It's somewhat exploratory. Let's let's have a two million dollar cap or whatever figure struck the council as appropriate. And if all goes well, then you can do it the next time with a larger amount and larger amount or whatever the council is comfortable with. But this would time, it come back to the North Nashville Bordo area, or could it come back, or would it be just that they got the two million dollars and that's it? I, I may be misunderstanding. Would, it, would the next version necessarily be relegated to North Nashville? Yes. Or, or if, if not the next time, but the time after that, could it come back to North Nashville, Bordeaux, considering? Sure. Yes. Because this is a function of the of the budget ordinance. It is it is crafted by, by the council and the administration. So you could use the, you could designate it for any portion of the of the city, but I think the agreement with this body and the mayor's office was this was an area of town that was most ripe for this endeavor and expressed previous interest in it. Okay, thank you. And I would welcome future discussion on how we grow this as we sort of learn how it works. Excuse me? I said I would welcome future discussion on, on what as we learn from this this year. What does well, it look like next year? Because well, think I mean, North Nashville and Bordeaux is a very large area, and it's not much that two million dollars can do. I understand that it's a pilot program, but I'm wondering if it goes to another area, which I'm sure they're going to need more than two million dollars. Is it possible for it to come back to North Nashville, Bordeaux, and they, if if you know, they'll be able to offer uh, something else? And can there be more than one community? Uh, as long as we put it in the budget, can I, it? I think the answer to both of those is yes. Okay, thank you. It's up to us. Good question. Council Member Gamble. Thank you, Chair. I, I would like, as Mr. Jamison said, to ask that the bill be moved for a month, one meeting deferral. Gotcha. It's been, um, actually, we need a motion because Council Member Gamble's not on the, it's been moved and seconded. All right, great. One meeting deferral. Any further discussion on the deferral? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? We recommend a one meeting deferral. Thank you. Next is RS 2021-1192. Sponsor is Allen, authorizes the Metro Department of Law to comprise and settle the property damage claim against Hunter Marine Transport Incorporated and Heinz Furlong Line Incorporated in the amount of $285,000. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Next is RS 2021-1193. Sponsors Allen authorizes the Metro Department of Law to comprise, compromise and settle the property damage claim of Andrew Kim against Metro government in the amount of $56,723. Do I have a motion? It's been moved and seconded. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? Bill is recommended. Uh, last bill, and then I have one question I would like to ask after we talk about the last bill. RS 2021-924, I'm sorry, not RS, BL 2021-924, this is on second reading. Sponsors, Alan Toombs, Murphy & Young, 
authorizes the granting of permanent temporary construction easements to Piedmont Natural Gas for property owned by the Metro government. Been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Council Member Glover. Just because I, I want to make sure I understand this. So they, they get this and then does that then generate property taxes or is it pretty much so just uh, um, out of the goodness of our hearts? Uh, would this be Hannah or Mr. Jameson? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Mr. Jameson say that officially. There's, there's no property tax component. There is a payment for the easement value. This is simply for them to install the pipelines. On okay. The I did, well, I didn't know if because, I, frankly, it's not something I go around and look at the property when they do these. So I'm just, that's why I was asking the question. All right. Thank you. Good question. We just give them a place to stand while they're building. Welcome, Councilmember Vercher. You count. You made it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and then I, I would like to ask a question uh, because uh, Ms. Bosch, Michelle Bosch was nice enough to come because I had a long list of questions uh, about the water bonds, which is not technically on the, the agenda. But um, if she would just be so kind as to explain briefly what those bond issues mean. And, and because I am not a finance person, when I looked at the numbers, I wanted to be assured that we're actually having a level payment every year. So if you could... Explain again what you explained to me. That would be very helpful. Thank you. I think. Hi, my there. name is Michelle Bosch. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? If you if you get close to the mic, I believe we can. Hi, my name is Michelle Bosch. Thank you. Um, I'm here to explain the uh, CT0253 debt report. That's a state form that's submitted to council. It's a requirement to be reported to council after we issue debt. Um, the state wants to, us to make sure we circle back with council to make sure you see all of the financings and how everything ended up. The report shows the actual bonds that were issued in the market. So you'll see on there, on page three, a listing of all of the uh, actual investments that were issued uh, with the coupon amounts and the principal payments too. Thank you. Any, anybody else got questions? Y'all may all have known exactly what you were looking at, but... It was helpful to me. Um, and then again, just, just to say, it, because it shows the principal amounts, it looks like that amount gets larger and larger and larger year by year, but we are making a level payment so that we know exactly what our debt service is relative to this for the next 30 That's years. That's correct. The, that report excludes the interest payment, which is why it looks like it's just a, a balloon payment, but it's, but it's not. It's a level payment. Awesome. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you coming and answering my questions. So if there are no other questions, then... Council, let's see, which one is that? That was this last item, number eight. Did we vote on item eight? We'll be sure. I have written down that we voted 12 in favor, zero against. Did we vote? All in favor, aye. Okay. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again, or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.